Welcome to the 21 convention, Orlando, Florida. It's 2016, guys. It's actually the under 21 convention, the original room where it all started. And we're about to hear from an amazing guy. He founded this thing, and man, this is amazing, in 2007. And I don't know what he expected in the beginning, but it was to bring people together, bring knowledge together, and so that people could grow. What it's turned into has been the absolute definition of men's development online, worldwide reach. Man, this is one of the, the guys with the greatest integrity that I know. And uh, if I had to put my money on somebody in, in some wisdom, it's this guy right here, Anthony Johnson. Come on, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm Anthony Johnson. Steve, thanks for the introduction. Hell of an intro. Uh, always gets me a big smile on my face. So welcome to the Under-21 Convention 2016. This is our first Under-21 Convention in about eight years, since 2008. Last time we had one was actually in this room. In this opening address, I want to welcome you guys to the event and kind of warm you up for the event. So it's not a full-length talk that's like an hour or something like that. It's a half hour, but it's going to be pretty solid, I hope. And I think you guys will get a lot out of it. And I'm following in the footsteps of people like James Marshall and Socrates, uh, who will be here later today, Socrates. We've also done this before. So yeah, before you even get going, uh, thanks for coming to the event in person. You know, we have thousands of people online who watch it, millions every year. But when you guys show up, that's truly badass. And it's a big part of what supports the company and keeps us going year in and year out for 10 years now. So before we get into even more of this, I want to talk about a brief 10-year history of running the company. Like Steve mentioned, we started a long time ago. We started back in 2006, actually. started organizing the first event, which later occurred in July 2007. Since then, my life's been like riding a rocket ship, uh, especially with this company in some other ways, too. But really, this company's been there for me over the past 10 years, age 17 when I started it, to now 27, going on 28. And having the company with me over the years has just been absolutely, well, like a rocket ship, just riding one bare, you know, bare-assed, uh, just like skyrocketing through the past 10 years. But it's been powerful, and it's been, it's been vital to have to surround myself with people who are like-minded and have similar goals and visions for their life. The same way you guys are surrounded by friends and people like yourselves right now in this room, and online in a way, too. So to give you guys kind of a brief overview for those of you who don't know, because not all of you actually know the history of the company. Some of you do, some of you don't. Convention started, I started organizing it, organizing it in 2006. 2007, we had the first event. We followed up in 2008 with an event here in this room, first one. 2009, I took it again to this room. We made it a little bit bigger. 2010, we took it across the world. I took it to Stockholm, Sweden, Europe for the first time. 2011, we did that again, brought it to London. 2012, that was the biggest year we've ever had. I brought it to Lund Austin, Texas, London, England, and Melbourne, Australia. That year was fucking insane. Some of you, I met that year actually. John, uh, Mike, a whole bunch of you guys were volunteers at the events throughout that year. That year was uh, truly phenomenal. 2013 took a year off because 2012 was so badass it just burnt me out. Truly, I couldn't do another event. I was like, I'm fucking done for a year. 2013 was off. 2014, we came back strong in Tampa. We had the biggest event we ever had. Three days, 23 speakers, 26 presentations, eight podcasts, 20 interviews. It's fucking massive. We're still putting out footage in 2016 from that event. That's how much content we had from it because it was huge. 2015, again, I took off. Now we're back here in 2016. We have two events this year, one in sitting in right now, and of course Miami, Florida later this year in October, October 20th, 23rd, which will be the biggest event we've ever done. Four days long, 30 speakers, 30 presentations, which is just nuts. And you guys will see that throughout today and tomorrow with a short two-day event. You guys are going to walk out just like mind fucked. And then you'll have double the length of that in Miami if you go. So that's kind of the brief 10-year history, the basic overview of how the company's operated over the years. And of course, we've had the YouTube channels over the years, different websites, different programs going on. But the events, that's where it's laid out. This is our, uh, I believe, 12th live event. This will be the 12th, might maybe be the 13th. So rather than just give you guys the brief uh, factual history, I wanted to take a moment and give you some unknown history. Because the stuff I just told you guys, you could have figured out through Google, the website, stuff like that. So I'll give you some of the good stuff, right, that you don't even know. 2010, late in the year, it's like October or something. So like six years ago, 
company's four years in, right? Running it since 2006, 2010. It's October. I had 23 cents in my personal bank account. The company had negative $300 in the business checking account. Thousands of dollars in debt. Didn't have money to eat. Barely had a place to sleep. That was 2010. And we had two events in Sweden and Orlando here in Florida. A lot of you guys don't know that. I don't talk about this stuff openly usually. But that's part of the company's history. So at that time, you know, super broke, couldn't even eat. I had to call my mom up, ask for 20 bucks. She barely had it herself. She gave it to me and I was able to eat for a week off that. I actually went to the Publix in downtown Orlando here, maybe five minutes away, and I remember walking up and down the aisles, finding the cheapest eggs and cheese I could buy so I could eat for a week. Otherwise, I'd just starve. Now, I mention this too because that is how dedicated I am to running this company. Even after I sold everything I owned to run the company, even after going into all this debt, being completely fucking broke, in that position, barely able to buy food, trying to buy the cheapest stuff I can just to fucking eat, I was still completely focused on the company. 23 cents, negative $300, broke as shit, can't eat. How am I gonna run the next conventions? That's where my fucking head's at. And that's the kind of dedication you see at this event in yourselves and the people around you and the volunteers. Mike McNally is a great example. This guy went through hell the other day getting to America from the UK. Seriously, like some fucked up shit. I was in a great mood when he told me. I was like, this is fucked up. Like, I'm in this awesome mood. This guy's like going through hell. But that is the kind of dedication you see in this event from the volunteers, from yourselves, from me, from dude, the staff, from the speakers, everyone. And that is really important in life, to have that kind of dedication and integrity to something that is important to you. So even in the worst possible position, you can't eat, you have pennies, literally 23 pennies in your bank account, negative hundreds of dollars in another account for the company. Still, we're gonna run the event. We're gonna do two of them next year. And I did. A couple months later, we sold $10,000 of the DVDs. Probably the last DVDs anyone in history ever bought in 2011, because no one fucking buys those anymore. We uh, started bringing money in off the YouTube channel for the first time ever. We started selling tickets to the London Convention in 2011 and the Orlando Convention in 2011. Turned everything around. Lowest, probably one of the lowest points of my life, clearly. No fucking problem. Because I know what's important to me, I know what my purpose is, and my purpose is running this fucking company, making it the best possible event I can, pursuing my happiness and pursuing my values with it. Having it be like a sword through fucking life. So that's the unknown history that you guys probably never heard of, where Anthony is like starving, you know. Well, I can go 30 days without eating, still run the company, so let's fucking do that. Whatever I gotta do, right? Now, fast forward to 2016 from being broke as shit in 2010, not knowing how I'm gonna eat. Uh, 2016 has been unfucking real. Like getting sh like I've been riding like bare ass, you know, rocket ship past 10 years, but 2016 is like getting shot out of a cannon. Uh, since January this year, even December 2015, to now has just blink of an eye. Unbelievably fast, unbelievably powerful and intense drama, all kinds of just unreal stuff that we're gonna talk about in the morning, tomorrow during my main talk, not this talk or the late, uh, the closing address, but my main speech. So yeah, this year has just been unreal. And never before in my life have I been, have I been more thankful for the work that I've put into myself and into this company and specifically the friendships and business relationships I've made and surrounded myself with. Unknowingly, I built an incredible safety net for my life and for my own personal health and well-being by building this company and pursuing my values and pursuing my passions with what I want to do with my life. Even when I had 23 fucking cents in my bank account, that shit paid off in spades when I needed it most. And I was deeply impressed with the dedication and effort and kindness people showed to me in the time of need that was by far the greatest in my life, much worse than 23 cents in your bank account. That shit looks like rich in comparison to recently. Not financially, clearly, but in other ways. See, so yeah, this year has been epic. And one of the results you're going to see that not only is the talk tomorrow morning, where we go over some of the things that happened, but we're going to do the biggest convention we've ever done this year in Miami, Florida. This event is a special event, as you guys know, focused on young people. It's an experimental thing. We'll probably do it again in the future, but special. But Miami this year in October is going to be fucking epic. And part of that is how this year started off. It's motivated me to work harder than I ever have and more intensely and focus myself on the company more than ever. Because a primary lesson I learned this year from everything that happened in my life personally 
is that I need this convention and company more than I ever have, and so do millions of other young men. So this year, getting shot out of a cannon, and we'll talk about what that means tomorrow, it's been a lesson in empathy and relating to you guys, people who are younger than me, but going through similar stuff in their life, like I was at your age. And it's been, uh, I guess, humbling. I'm not usually a fan of the word humble, but it's been, it's been a humbling year. Kind of like James Marshall, one of our speakers, talks about, no matter where you're at, you can still get fucking knocked on your ass. And that is exactly what happened. And then the people who I built around me picked me right back up. I picked myself up too, of course. But yeah, this year has just been a huge lesson in that how vital this convention is for me personally and for you guys. Because I realized, and one of the reasons I bring this up too is that as I get older and I have more time behind me from where I started really working on my life, it gets a little bit more difficult to relate to people who are going through different stuff. So for example, I grew up fat, I had really bad acne, I was overweight, I had man boobs. My sister used to call them man boobs and like make fun of me and shit. So it's been a long time since I've been that way. So when I see people going through weight problems like that or other health problems, as the years roll by, it's harder to relate to that. But this year has been a huge lesson in relating. And yeah, you guys need it more than ever. I need it. We need something like this. We need an organization dedicated to helping you improve your life in a reliable way that is grounded in real life, not in like wishful thinking here and now on this earth, in this room, this weekend. Now we're gonna rewind a little bit here to 2008. So the last under 21 convention was in 2008. It was right here in this room, Orlando, Florida, United States of America. It was in July, July 19th to the 23rd or something like that. I have to look the exact dates. Now I mention this because, yeah, we'll show that. A Couple days after that event, a lot of crazy shit going on at that event behind the scenes, right? But it all worked out. But a few days later, my best friend Curtis died of cancer at 22 years old. So that was about a week after this event. He was dying of cancer during the event, I knew that. But I came here to do it because it was important to me and I knew he wanted me to be here no matter what. A few days later, he died. So what I decided to do after the event was dedicate that particular event to him. So if you actually look on some of the old 2008 videos on YouTube, you'll see in the description it's like dedicated to Curtis Knoll. That was his name. I didn't ask him, I didn't need his permission. I know full heartedly he would have really appreciated the endorsement or the dedication. And part of the reason I dedicated to him was not simply that he is my best friend and he died, which clearly is tragic, especially at such a young age, a cancer, which is really rare. But he's someone who has motivated me even now, uh, eight years later. He continually was impressive and inspiring in his own life and is to this day to me. And seeing someone so young with such a bright future ahead of them die like that I don't know if it scarred me, but it really is a vivid reminder of how important my life is and everyone's life is when you're alive. Because you don't know when you're going to die. Clearly there was a shooting recently in Orlando, and that's a vivid reminder too. But when it's personal like this, when your best friend dies like this, just like that, and you think like there's no way someone so young is going to die of cancer, it really impacts you. And it drives me to this day. Like Steve said with the integrity, people make comments like that about me a lot. The intensity, the drive, the uh, integrity. Intensity, drive, integrity. A lot of that is because of Curtis, because of the way he lived his life and the way he was so fucking dedicated to pursuing his happiness and pursuing his values. And he did it without studying it and without education and without surrounding himself with people who did it uh, independently of him. He was the source of it. He was self-generating the stuff, which is just fucking amazing. It still blows my mind that he lived his life in the way he did without external sources of information. He did a wonderful job of it. And I continue to look back to this day at him and it also reminds me again why it was so valuable and important to dedicate an event like this to him. So, I'd like Dean to come to the front of the room right now. Dean's not coming to the front of the room. My friend Dean was supposed to be standing at the door right now, this weekend. April 30th, I invite my friend Dean, I invite him to work security at the convention, basically be like a door person, watch the door. So we're texting, he signs up, he's really excited to do it. This is April 30th, 2016, a few weeks ago. Later that day, my friend Tim hangs out with him. A few hours after that, Dean dies in what appears to be an accident. Dean, just turned 28 years old, was 
unbelievably fucking kick-ass dude, a lot like Curtis, dead. We're just texting. He signs up to work at the convention, excited to do it, dead. That's it. Dean should have been right fucking there, standing there, watching the speech, and he's not. Just like Curtis should be here. Young people like this that die like this, it's, it's horrible. But you need to remember it and not let it wash away because it needs to drive you, and that's exactly what they would want too. This is Dean, by the way. This is the only picture I ever got to take of him. It was in uh, Kay Costa State Park in 2011. So, and I'm, I bring this up, by the way, with Dean. Let's not forget this. So I dedicated 2008 to Curtis Knoll after the fact. Dean died recently, so I'm dedicating this event to Dean New. He deserves it just like Curtis did. Dean is someone who had a great sense of humor and, like Curtis, was very uh, focused on what he wanted to do in his life. Pursuing his happiness, pursuing his values, particularly with bodybuilding. This guy was fucking awesome to be around. He had in particular what uh, one of my favorite philosophers called a great sense of life, meaning his total approach and total uh, emotional evaluation of how to face reality and how to live life. Dean was awesome to be around. He's someone who would have loved to be here, just like he signed up to work at the event. Dean, like Curtis, deserves an event to be dedicated to him because of the way he lived his life, not just because he died and it's tragic, because he was fucking awesome. And one of the ways you saw that too is that, so Dean and Curtis had a lot of similarities. They never got to meet, by the way, but similar in some ways. But both of them, I find it very interesting. I went to both of their memorials, of course. Both of them had huge memorials with hundreds of people at them, and people were devastated beyond belief. And I found it fascinating that not only, of course, are people were devastated because they're so young, but there were so many people and the stories they shared were so similar. Meaning, both of these people were very young and they both impacted hundreds and hundreds of people in their lives. And at that age, with that kind of uh, charisma and influence, I think it's really rare. And it's special and it reflects on who they are as a person, just like you guys. Here today, in this room, pursuing your values, pursuing your happiness, and the success you want to have in your life. Whether it's with women, dating, relationships, health and fitness, and so on. So both of them have inspired me, and I hope they inspire you guys too, to live your life to the fucking max. Because that's exactly what they did. Nothing stopped these guys except death. That's exactly what should stop you. Nothing short of fucking death. Whatever you want to pursue in your life, your goals, your values, your happiness, go after it and don't fucking stop. Let nothing stop you except being dead. That's, that's a valid excuse. You're dead. It's okay, it's okay to stop. <laughs> Seriously, it's all right, legit excuse. I also bring Dean up because he was an excellent, excellent <laughs> example and uh, exemplary person of personal transformation. You guys are here to self-improve, to transform your lives in a variety of different ways, whatever is specific to you while you're here. Dean, he had, a, he had a relationship like I ultimately did, very similar, with a really toxic, abusive person. That caused him, after his divorce, to go gain a lot of weight, got way out of shape, and in one year, this guy fucking got shredded and huge. That's why I hired him over security. He's huge, it's intimidating as fuck. So. But seriously, look at this. This is someone in one year who made, this is a physical transformation, but it reflects on him as a person too, that the immense amount of hard work he put into this. Hitting the gym as often as he needed to, hard as fuck, dedicated as fuck, nothing stopped him from getting like that. He did it. This is how he looked towards the end of his life too. He's just fucking massive. So if you need inspiration, look at this guy. This guy did it, and you can do it too. Now, maybe not exactly, like Dean has very specific genetics, a lot of you probably can't get that big. That's not important. The importance is the transformation. Going through that process is difficult, and he did it, and you can do it too. So, should go without saying, you guys should prepare yourself for the weekend of a lifetime. We'll say it anyway, right? A lot of you have never been to this event before. Some of you have. Mitch, I see a number of you guys have been here before. But seriously, even this two-day weekend, which for us is short, is going to fucking blow your minds. By the time you guys leave tomorrow, you're going to have information overload. You're going to be super emotional, like, holy fuck, what the fuck just happened over the past 48 hours? I can't believe this. And I'm really happy you guys came. And seriously, like, buck your seatbelts. It's going to be fucking epic. And specifically, this is the best event on earth for young men. And you are a part of it because you're sitting here in this room today. You made it. You showed up. You took action. You invested in yourself. 
don't forget that. That's important. They say showing up is half the battle or more than half the battle. Regardless of what percentage it is, you did it, and it's really fucking important, and it's really fundamental to living your life and getting where you want to go and finding your purpose and living that purpose. You guys are here, and that is really, really critical. Not just for the company, for you guys as individuals in your own lives. So that's it. That's my opening address. I can't thank you guys enough for coming. It, may, it means the world to me. It should mean the world to you, and you'll see that more throughout the event as you stay here and experience it. That's all I got. I'm Anthony Johnson, and I look forward to having you guys throughout the whole fucking weekend, having an awesome time. I'll be speaking tomorrow on my own main speech, and I'll be here throughout the event. You can ask me anything you guys want throughout the whole time. Thank you. All right, everybody.